Welcome, comrade. Today, we're taking a step back into 1945. World War II is wrapping up. America shows off its atomic toys. And I was in the best part of my life. There are quite a few games set around this era. Like, pretty much all the Call of Duty games prior to modern warfare and the dark times. But the one we're looking at today is, uh, different. How different? Time traveling Soviet's different. And no, it's not Red Alert. One day, Tim. One day. Singularity is a first-person shooter released back in 2010 for the PC, 360, and PS3. It was developed by Raven Software, the developers behind Heretic, Soldier of Fortune, and... Jesus Christ. And published by Activision, who can go fuck themselves. It all starts with the US, having just developed atomic weapons, basically dominating the world, until the Soviets, while searching for uranium, find a new element. E-99, an element with seemingly unlimited energy. Upon its discovery, Stalin immediately orders it to be researched, giving a man named Viktor Barasov a team and an island to do just that. Everything seems to be going okay until the island, named Katorga 12, kinda, sorta, just a little bit, blew the fuck up, leaving no survivors. Because, as it turns out, E-99 is highly volatile. The Soviets immediately shut that shit down and cover it up, until 2010, when a US spy satellite goes blind due to a radiation spike from Katorga 12. The US, wanting to, of course, spy on everyone, wants to know why this happened, and so sends a team to investigate. Wait, did that say Spartan team? Like Master Chief Spartan? Or are we running around in a loincloth? Like just about every other military shooter, we start in a helicopter, carrying our protagonist, Captain Renko, and his comrade Devlin to the island of Katorga 12. Although this game is a damn sight less brown than most games of this era. Or green? No, seriously, what the fuck was that, Resident Evil 5? Do my eyes have gangrene now? ETA to target three minutes. The rest must be scared shitless if they're willing to risk an international incident sending us in like this. Eh, it's fine. If they're complaining, we'll just say zombies did it. God, I'm having legendary flashbacks. Uh, well, we're alive. Somehow, and if the radio's to be believed, so's Devlin. Which is odd, because last time I checked, falling from a helicopter is pretty goddamn fatal. This does mean, on our way to the rendezvous point, we get to explore some of the ruins of the island. Which, right out of the gate, I really liked. This place has been abandoned since, like, the 60s. It has that old Soviet look with its grey bricks and red banners, mixed with this dystopian flair of twisted corpses and old machinery left for god knows how long to gather dust and rust. And I'm just pretending to know what I'm talking about. It looks cool, alright? Oh, and Stalin. He watches you. He judges you. The game carries this rusted Soviet aesthetic for pretty much the entire game, apart from when you, spoiler alert, go back in time. Then we just get plain old Soviet engineering. On top of all that, the amount of interactivity in this game is pretty amazing. In this first room alone, you can ding the typewriter. Answer the phone. Watch an educational video. Read some notes, pick through the remains of the game's storyline, and hear the ghosts on the PA system. We're nearing the Duke 3D level of interactive shit here, so this is some good first impressions. You don't get to do this for long, however, before getting hit with another radiation burst. Which, instead of turning you into a ghoul, sends you back in time. Seemingly back to when the accident that killed everyone happened. Where we get to play hero! Shut up, Nolan North. I'm being a good guy. This is like the one time of year I do this. He saved me. Oh, uh, yeah, that can't be good. 
I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, everything else seems normal. Apart from the weird flashbacks. And that. These mutants we fight are strange, tumorous, thin-limbed creatures that are pretty creepy to look at, but thankfully are easy to take down. Which is convenient, seeing as you get your first gun at this point. The Centurion Revolver. It's, uh... It's okay, I guess. I mean, it looks cool and, uh, it goes bang, but sounds kind of, uh... Eh. It does, however, blow the mutant's limbs off. So I guess that's a plus. On stronger enemies, however, you might as well cough on them. Whatever you're carrying might actually kill them faster. Oh god, no, that line didn't age well. Jesus. Thankfully, it doesn't take long to replace our nerf gun. And while the replacements aren't great, they at least get the job done. Starting with the AR-9 Valkyrie Assault Rifle. It fires fast, does good damage, and look at this one. It spins. But sounds kind of weak. And when it gets replaced, you really aren't gonna miss it. No, I'm not showing you the replacement yet. It's too good. Just be patient. I stuck with the Volk shotgun mostly. One, because I love shotguns, and two, this one throws your enemies backwards like they just got punched in the damn soul, which is beyond satisfying no matter how many times I do it. It needs an upgrade to be really effective, but for me, it's the third best weapon in the game. Shortly after picking those up, we meet back with Devlin, who's just a tad confused about the current situation, but unlike us, hasn't lost the ability to open doors. What was with this era of shooters and needing other people to do the same simplest shit for the player. It just makes me think back to that game Homefront, which is not a good thing. Some platforming later, we find the Kasimov sniper rifle, which is good for popping zombie heads, but loses its effectiveness when the faster enemies start rolling in. Which is a problem, seeing as the Russian army is currently trying to give us the Stalingrad experience. It's also where we find our first gun upgrade station. You get points, use points, put in gun, gun now do shoot shoot harder. It's pretty basic. Don't really have time to stick around and browse though, cause... Ah oh, shit! Time to go! Captain Reko. You are Captain Reko, are you not? Don't look so surprised. Your name's right on your uniform. America's charming pension for individuality. Now, I have some questions for you. Name, rank, and serial number. That's all you get from us, Ivan. Check your Geneva Convention handbook. I did away with that little inconvenience years ago. <coughs> See? We are officers in the United States military. I want to talk to someone in our embassy. I think you'll find that impossible for a number of reasons. Our embassy, right now! Oh, god damn it! How are they gonna make Uncharted 5? That's better. How is it you haven't aged a day in 50 years? There is only one explanation. The TMD, where is it? Run, Rayco. Head straight to the doorway. Just follow the open doors. Oh god, Renko, why do you have the cardio of an old man breathing through a straw? Have none of the programmers heard of adrenaline? It's like the only thing I can still feel. Well, that and the bloodlust. We get saved by someone called Catherine, who seems to know who we are, thanks to something called Mere 12. I have no idea what that is, but maybe this educational video will help us find out. Here, this should all be. We are Mere 12. Our mission is to reveal the truth that's been hidden from the entire world. In the 1950s, a military research base was built on the island of Katorga 12. To this day, the government denies its existence. That is a lie. According to top secret documents we've uncovered, the base was the site of research involving the mineral E-99. The E-99 research program was headed by two men, Dr. Viktor Barasov, a top researcher in the field of quantum physics. He didn't live to see the outcome of his work. Reports say he was killed in an unexplained laboratory accident. This man stepped in to lead the program after Barasov's death. He went on to lead Russia in a war for world domination. A war won using super-powered weaponry developed at Katorga 12. Today, we know him as Chancellor Nikolai Demichev, leader of the world government. The events surrounding Demichev's rise to power are still a mystery. Our organization is in possession of a journal that claims Demichev is a fraud. 
It raises many questions about the Torga 12. What happened there to put Chancellor Demichev in power? What could have caused so much destruction and taken so many lives? Evidence points to this structure on Katorga 12, the Singularity. What is the Singularity? The journal claims one man will lead us to the answers. His name is Captain Nathaniel Renko. It is our mission to locate Captain Renko and help him achieve his goal. We are mere 12. We will reveal the truth. Wait, so I'm the chosen one? Ah, oh, you're so fucked. How do they know I can stop this? Do they know I started it? And how do they know Renko's first name? I'm controlling him and I don't know that. In layman's terms, we messed up the timeline really fucking badly. And now we've somehow got to fix it. But how the hell are we going to do that? I mean, it's not like we can control time yet. See, before he died, Barasov invented something called the Time Manipulation Device, or TMD for short. What we're seeing here is a smaller version of it. The prototype is that weird gravity gun looking thing. Because he was not an idiot, he hid it in a vault, so Demichev couldn't take over the world or accidentally time cop himself, I don't know, he doesn't seem like the brightest. After fighting our way through more cool looking ruins and sending the Blue Man group back to hell, we find said vault tucked away underground with the TMD nicely contained in a glass case. How did I pick two games in a row with magic hands? Man, this thing looks so fucking cool. It's got these two Nixie Tube looking things on top of it I just love. And it's not just looks. The TMD itself is pretty fucking cool in game. For starters, our weak little knife is replaced with a blast that separates most enemies into their constituent parts. Slightly later on, you get a bubble that slows down time for anyone inside it. And best of all, changing the age of almost anything you can find. This means that where in any other game, a broken staircase would mean you'd have to turn around and find another way. In this game, you can just reverse its age back to when it was in one piece and continue on your merry way. This also works on enemies. It's as great as it sounds. <laughs> you chose poorly, motherfucker. The downsides of the blast costs a lot of TMD energy, making it less useful than the shotgun. And aging enemies only really works on human enemies, as the E99 monsters either just slow down or become visible, making it a bit of a waste of time, really. A little bit later, you get a mod that lets you turn human enemies into these things called reverts, which is fun in that horrific psycho way, and useful, because I can always use more meat shields. Well, whatever. Time to go back in time. What's the meaning of this? Who are you? How did you get in here? Wow, everything's so clean here. Yeah, I'll fix that. After teaching Demichev the meaning of the word defenestration, we escort Barasov to his safe containing his notes. And by notes, I mean the second best gun in the game, the Seeker. Take this. It is a prototype E99 weapon. It can be unstable. <laughs> oh, don't worry. So am I. You don't even need to be able to see the enemy to use this. You can just fly bullets straight into them while you have a snack. I'm pretty sure the bullets explode as well. Hey devs, can I have more of this? It does, unfortunately, have a very limited ammo capacity and you just can't pick up more until way later in the game. Which means once it's gone, it's gone. It just seems like a waste to me. Why would you make something so cool and have it barely show up throughout the game? Don't get me wrong, the shooting is mostly fun as is, but locking the really good shit away is just silly. I love these little videos of Barasov showing off his experiments. It's some good world building and a good way of showing off the stuff you're going to get later. Anything visual out of the ordinary. And as you see, no noticeable... <laughs> Turn it off! Okay, well... We fixed the timeline. Time to head back and, oh, it's still a shithole. Barasov's still here though, so that's, uh, good. He wants to talk, and instead of just meeting us here, we need to trek all the way to his tower in the middle of the island. This is where the game really starts to show its cracks. There's lots of things that could be done with the TMD, but most of it is spent solving crate puzzles. And while using it on human enemies is fun, the E99 creatures are more allergic to ballistics than time magic. You can throw shit at enemies, but that was impressive in 2004. By the time this game had come out, every game had done this. I didn't become a time wizard just to throw a box at a zombie. There is a reason why the game kind of falls apart. It was cancelled. 
for a day. See, when the Activision rep came to Raven Software's offices and saw the game could barely run on high-end PCs, let alone consoles, the writing was on the wall, especially since they'd already passed their second alpha deadline. Of course, it wasn't actually cancelled because they struck a deal. Control of the game was given to the Marvel team, who'd recently shipped X-Men Origins Wolverine, and they were given a hard deadline of 10 months. That wouldn't be so bad if it was just polishing and fixing, but instead the team had to basically rip the game to shreds to make it work, including huge parts of the story and then piece together what they had left. That would explain the abundance of audio logs, but also the lack of any big TMD set pieces, because... Well, in that short of a time frame, it's kind of hard to make anything reasonable or fun. But it was a choice of cancelling the whole thing, or hard crunch. They chose the latter. Quote, This wasn't development, it was triage. We had to save who we could, and bayonet the dying. We had no time left to do either, with any subtlety. Did you think the abilities of the TMD were poorly explored? Did you get tired of using a device that could change the passage of time to merely renew a crushed box to a non-crushed status? Yeah, so did we. But we did not have the time to properly create fun gameplay with the weapon, and build well-paced levels around it. The irony of working on a time travel game without having enough time to explore the concept properly never grew tiresome. At all. Ever. End quote. And that was just the single player content. This game had fucking multiplayer. Because of course it does. This was the heyday of COD. It was mandated by law. I haven't tried it unfortunately because, well, I mean, no one's playing this. You need hostages, and I'm fresh out of those. From the footage I've seen, it's humans versus mutants defending or destroying beacons, and it looks fun, especially with something made in such a short amount of time. It reminds me a lot of the natural selection mod made back in the Half-Life 1 days. Or the multiplayer in Colonial Marines. Seriously, how does this shit keep getting brought up? Ah, now this looks interesting. I wonder how we'll fight him. Well, let me solve this great puzzle, and we just throw barrels at him. Really? All this super cool Soviet engineering to play with. And our first boss is Zombie Donkey Kong. <sighs> well, at least he's dealt with quickly. And we can continue our journey with, uh, who are you again? Oh yeah, Catherine, right. We end up running into more trouble a little bit down the road, having to hold off these things by de-aging the electrical fences switch boxes, which is a nice sequence, but really isn't that difficult. I don't know, it just seems to drag on a bit. But hey, at least watching these things fry is a little bit satisfying. Up in the tower, we get another educational video, this time about what happened after we saved Demichev. From the moment I invented the TMD, Demichev wanted it. He demanded I hand it over for him to use in his research. When I refused, he had me and everyone else who wouldn't cooperate labeled as traitors. If it weren't for you, I would have been killed along with everyone else. Demichev was obsessed with the power and possibilities of the singularity. But a few months after it came online, there was a terrible accident. The singularity exploded, killing thousands instantly. But they were the lucky ones. Those who survived were left to a fate worse than death. The E-99 radiation mutated every living thing on the island, including humans. The island was quarantined and abandoned, but not before E-99 had been effectively mass-produced and implemented in everything from microwaves and vehicles to weapons more powerful than America's atomic bomb heels of the success, Demichev was able to quickly rise through the party ranks, preaching all the while that Russia had a technological advantage it must use quickly and ruthlessly. And Premier Khrushchev agreed. Russia launched a preemptive strike against the United States, devastating its entire East Coast with a single E-99 bomb. Simultaneous attacks were also launched across Europe. Germany, France, Great Britain, None could stand against the E-99 weapons of the USSR's troops. Within six months, the entire world was under Khrushchev's control. But not for long. Demichev used his growing number of supporters to oust Khrushchev and install himself as Chancellor for life. So you see, the timeline has been altered. But it can be corrected, and the singularity is the key. With it, Demichev rose to power, and the Soviet Union dominated the world.
But hold on, didn't we go back and shoot him? Well, yeah, we did, but somehow the Demachev we saved from the fire is still knocking about the island along with the Barasov we saved. My best guess is because we changed the timeline whilst inside the already changed timeline, the initial change of saving Demachev wasn't affected. We've basically turned Katorka 12 into a big timeline melting pot and seemingly fixed bugger all. But the only thing that can destroy the singularity is something of equal power. The E-99 bomb Khrushchev desired. There's one aboard a freighter that sunk in the harbor when the singularity exploded. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Wait, there's a fucking turbo nuke just floating in a wrecked boat? There are two ways I can see this going. At some point we go and grab it, or it resurfaces the entire ocean floor. Take that elevator down into the old rail line. From there you'll have to travel to the docks. Catherine and I will do our best to help you. Well, it looks like we're going for option one, as we now need to find a train to get down to the docks. This unfortunately leads us into the worst section of the game. Unless you like ticks, at which point I have to ask who the fuck gave a possum a computer. These E99 ticks come at you in big waves and blow up as soon as they get near you, draining your health in a heartbeat. And if you thought running was a good idea, I'm afraid that's not happening either, because they're faster than you. Your best bet is using the TMD's pulse, but that eats energy fast. So a heavy dose of buckshot is a good backup plan. I think blowing up these pustule things is supposed to stop them. But from what I can tell, they did bugger all, and I ended up getting through this section on luck alone, and I really wish it just wasn't here. Now they do come back later on, but are easier to deal with, because they're not funneled straight up your ass. But by the time that happened, I was already having more legendary flashbacks. I was foaming at the mouth and everything. I think I need therapy. Whoever's writing this stuff is a depressing bastard. Ah, yeah, that'd do it. Hey, aren't you that thing from Dead Space? Ah! We get the spike shot around this time, which sounds cool. I mean, it's a fucking railgun, but it's shockingly useless. It takes an age to charge up, but just seems to purposely miss its target, which sure is useful for a gun. Just leave it there, you're not gonna need it. Especially for the revert stealth section. Heh, <laughs> yeah, stealth, that's, uh, that's what we'll call it. Oh, uh, hi again. Why do you have an English accent? How did you get here? Take the gun. It should come in handy. Oh yes, here we are. The assault rifle's replacement. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> I just can't, it's, uh, <laughs> How, what? Uh, sorry, I think I blacked out for a second there. It's so good. The absolute best gun in the game. It shreds everything in your way like a hot chainsaw through soft butter. Nothing is going to stop you at this point. You are death incarnate. Take your damn hands off me! Let me go! That'll be fine. I'm a god now. Ah, my man flesh! We chased Catherine through the building, turning everything in her path into a fine gooey paste, including the poor fuckers guarding Catherine in the lamest breach sequence ever, until we get to the train yard. Haha, <laughs> not even your shields can stop me now. So, how exactly are we gonna fix this train? Anyway, if you expected this train journey to go smoothly, then you've obviously forgotten what game you're playing. Yeah, we should probably kill this thing. The fight itself looks pretty cool and is quite dramatic, but like the first boss, Big Dick Necromorph over here is pretty easy to take down. It has these big pustules you need to shoot, and you just need to dodge its slow claws and mouth. It's not exactly rocket science. Once you've weakened it, you need to sprint down through the train, dodging its attacks and... Oh no, not you again. And use the TMD beam to finally put it down, finally getting us to the docks. What do you think the train held together? We met later. It has been the most frightening experience of my life. I'm uh, glad we met as well. Who are you again? Oh, right. We continue through doing more crate puzzles. God, this got tedious first. And get walked back in time again. You don't do anything special in the past, like 
at all. Unless we shot someone important back there. But I'm not sure that'd matter at this point. By now, I imagine the timeline would look like a quivering, gooey slug. I thought we'd maybe take a part from the past TMD Enhancer to fix the future version, but... Nope. After killing all the goons in another good gunfight, we just get walked back like nothing happened. I'm guessing this is one of the parts that got trimmed down during development, but who knows. What I do know is that Russians built some kind of plasma ball machine to power the Enhancer, and it looks like it's straight out of Red Alert. I love it, and I want it. After that, we get to raise the ship containing the bomb in a cutscene. I mean, I know it'd just be the mouse and ball game again we had back at repairing the train, but come on. Raging a ship back out of the ocean. This would be much cooler to see in-game, watching everything slowly snap back into place. But I'm guessing this was another part left on the cutting room floor. At least the sequence inside the ship is pretty cool. According to Barisov, the TMD wasn't meant to bring anything this big back. So as we're heading towards the E-99 bomb, the ship is starting to age again. The rust is starting to creep back in at an increasing rate and the metal is starting to creak and buckle. Also, more ghosts, because the bomb is apparently unstable and is affecting the timeline. Wow, it's like leaving a world-ending weapon under the sea to rust for, what, 50, 60 years wasn't a good idea. Franco, the ship is reverting. It's starting to sink. There's no way he'll make it with all of Demichev's men there. You see what I'm wielding, right? Unless I'm dealing with space marines, I think I'll be fine. The lower deck is now completely flooded, but that somehow doesn't affect the time nuke, and we grab it before we go down with the ship. Captain Renko, thank heavens you're all right. Here, let me help you. You did it. You got the E-99 bomb. Hey, uh, uh, before I pass out, you're probably gonna want to wash that thing. I have no idea where I shoved that to swim up here. Ah yes, I also sleep with my auto cannon. It's the only thing that truly understands me. I regret to inform you that Catherine... Well... I tried to stop her at the dock, but she wouldn't listen to me. She wanted to draw the soldier's gunfire to make sure you escaped with the E-99 bomb. She was shot just as the ship started. Oh, that's, uh... Catherine. Sad, uh... Who is she again? But we cannot allow her sacrifice to be in vain. We must succeed and stop Demichev. Unfortunately, the bomb you found is not properly charged. You have to get to the cooker. It's part of the facility where there is, or I suppose I should say was, something we'll need. Now, go quickly, Captain. Demichev is closing in. Wait, you have a cooker here? So do we bake or fry the bomb? Getting through the ruins at this point is a bit tougher, as we are now not only dealing with Russians, but also giant tumor spider things. They look like they'd be difficult to deal with, but uh, did I mention the autocannon breaks the game? Some box puzzles and a bridge fixing later, and we finally make it to the factory, which, thanks to an accident, is filled with E-99 gas. You don't need to guess the health benefits of that. Other than more zombies and needing a gas mask, there's not much to note here. The best thing you do here is go through a time rift just to grab a crate, which you then go back and use to climb in an elevator. You time travel to get a box. It's like using the TARDIS to pick up your mail. We couldn't just, I don't know, bamber in. How fucked are Renko's knees at this point? Wow, glad there's not me down there. So the cooker's great. Barisov being as useful as a balcony in a submarine only felt like telling us the cooker needs a code after we got inside. Thankfully, there's a time rift upstairs, so we'll just go back to 1955 and nick it from the Soviets then. Just hope they don't notice. All security teams are to area 6C. I think they noticed. Man, that thing looks cool. Kinda like a singularity. Huh? Huh? Okay, okay, I'll leave. Let me charge this thing first. Oh, that's gotten awfully big. Uh, time to go. Uh, Doctor? I blew up your oven. Eh, uh, he doesn't care.
We need to get to the Singularity Tower's reactor and place the bomb, because the only way of fixing this is blowing everything to hell and back, which is always my go-to plan. Getting there isn't going to be so easy, because the closer we get to the reactor, the more 1955 starts to merge with 2010, even changing Barasov back to his younger self temporarily, which is a level of detail I was not expecting. Also, all the rocks and dirt are floating like someone's going super so. Oh, you silly bastard. Is that a threat? <laughs> yeah, how'd that work out for you? I'm not sure if that was supposed to be a boss fight, but by now my TMD and World Ending Weapon were pretty well upgraded. You could have thrown Superman at me at this point, and I probably would have had a shot. We are unfucking stoppable now. Oh, uh, oh my, yeah. Uh, have you guys ever played Half-Life 2? You know the bit at the end of the gravity gun goes all blue and crazy? Well, it's the same thing here. Not that we get to use it for very long, because once we get to the reactor, we have to open a rift back to 1955 and take this place out before this all happened. Wait, what? Trip down memory lane, Captain. You look surprised. All that effort to destroy the singularity when all I had to do was simply rebuild it. Now, give me the TMD. How did you rebuild this place? You're supposed to be dead. Don't rankle. We're missing something, but we can figure it out. We can still set things. Yeah, up. you're both idiots. Only the victors rewrite the history books, and you lost. Only the victors rewrite the history books. That's it! The singularity is not the problem. You went back in time and saved Demichev from being killed in the burning building. Remember? to change back. You cannot let Demichev live. <coughs> it won't work. You've already tried that and failed. Don't you remember who else was there, Captain Renko? <laughs> Wait, so that was us? I thought it was Devlin. We've never heard Renko talk, so this comes right out of left field. Wait, so does this mean we've done this before? Wow, we really did fuck this all up. That other man was you. He's right, Captain. You are the anomaly, which means the only way to correct the timeline is for you to stop yourself. You mean kill himself? You're asking a man to sacrifice himself for something you've been mistaken about. How many times now? I'm not sure you are a reliable authority, Beresov. Renko, don't listen to him. You can save the world. So you say. But Captain, think about what you were before all of this. Drone in the hive. I can offer you a whole other life. Things you could only imagine. At your fingertips. Give me the TMD and help rule the world. Is this a world you want to be a part of, Renko? Look around you. Look at all the suffering this man has caused. No visionary leader is without his critics. Renko, he is not a leader. He's a mass murderer, a dictator. You must stop him at all costs. Use the TMD in the singularity. Travel back in time and kill yourself. Well, that certainly sounds like an attractive offer. Or, you can prove your loyalty to me by killing Beresov. And I will grant you unlimited power. Make your choice, Captain.
Uh, sure. Bye, Demachev. Bye, me. Hello, sweet oblivion. Sake. Oh, well, that worked great. Fuck you. No, Captain. Well done, Captain Renko. I see you have what it takes. So about that unlimited power. Chancellor Demichev is the only survivor of Katorga 12. Any mention of Barasov is wiped from history. With the TMD at your disposal, you and Demichev now control the singularity. Katorga 12 becomes pivotal in Demichev's final push to remove all remnants of rebellion against his leadership. As commander of the military, you forge Demichev's forces into an unstoppable war machine. You even train some of the island's creatures in combat. You use them as a first wave assault in all major battles. Millions are forced into slave labor. With the full power of the singularity and you at the helm of the military, any pockets of resistance around the world are weeded out. Near 12 proves difficult at first, but with the TMD by your side, they do not stand a chance. In the years that follow, tensions build within the ruling Russian dictatorship. Your knowledge of advanced weaponry and control of the TMD allows your support to grow. Some believe you are more powerful than Chancellor Demichev himself. Demichev recognizes this and begins a secret weapons development program in the former United States. There are even rumors he's created his own TMD. Conflict seems inevitable as the world once again finds itself in the midst of a cold war between two superpowers. Wait, I thought he wanted us to give him the TMD. Why did he let me keep that? Okay, that's it. You're both idiots and you're both going to hell. With Dr. Barasov and Chancellor Demichev dead, the knowledge of E-99 and Katorga-12 dies with them. You disappear and become a legend in the years to come. Most believe you never existed in the first place. The whereabouts of the TMD are unknown. Weeks pass before the bodies of Demichev and Barasov are discovered. The murders are never solved. The death of Chancellor Demichev was the first step in ending Russia's grip on the world. The USSR quickly dissolves into feuding factions all vying for power. Wars erupt across the globe as casualties rise into the millions. With their newfound freedom, Mir-12 grows in strength and influence. While they continue their fight against the Russian military, they also begin a manhunt for Dr. Barasov's murderer. To this day, they have been unsuccessful. With the TMD removed from Katorga-12, the singularity destabilizes. A massive explosion destroys the eastern coast of Russia and stretches as far as the prison state of Alaska. A group of Katorga-12 creatures escapes to the Russian mainland and overruns New China. There are rumors of a secret army taking over parts of the former United States. Their leader remains a mystery, but is said to be ruthless laying waste to all who stand in his way. It is believed his plans involve world domination. His following grows every day. Some claim he is able to summon incredible power, as if he controlled the hand of God himself. So we get to rule a mostly ruined world? You know what? Fuck it. Good enough. I'm gonna make a skull throne. I'll be honest, this was a hard one. 
This video may seem a lot more rambly than usual, but that's because so much of the story and gameplay just kind of jumbles up against itself, if you get my meaning. The story seems to open up so many threads just to cut them off because they had to scramble to get this into any workable state. For example, why can't I just shoot Demachev when I go back to stop myself? That would stop the whole thing right there, surely. But no, I have to shoot myself, which apparently doesn't stop anything, because then Barasov just takes over the world. But surely he had died on the island, like in the regular timeline, because we never saved Demachev, which would lead to the island blowing up and being abandoned. And what about Catherine? Who is she? How did she even get here? She's not Russian or American, so why is she even here? She really doesn't do anything of any note either, other than getting shot and writing the journal in the post credits scene. It just feels like she's here to try and keep the plot on the rails, and the failings of said plot aren't exactly made up for by the gameplay either. I mean, the gunplay is fun, especially when you get the auto cannon, but almost all the puzzles are just aging and de-aging boxes. You can tell there was so much more planned for this game, and it all got gutted just to get the game out. It's so sad to see see because when this game's good, it's damn good. And I did enjoy playing it, but it's sad to see how much more this could have been. This would have curb stomped most other games coming out at this time if they could have just finished it, and Raven might not have been cast into the Call of Duty dimension. It's kind of like the opposite of Legendary. While that was a game with a great concept made by people who had no idea what to do and couldn't give a shit, Singularity is a game with a great concept made by people who could pull it off and put their all into it only to be hindered by Activision in the tech of the day. I'd really like to see this game remade, all the stuff it was supposed to have, but in this day and age, that's probably never gonna happen. Oh well, a man can dream. <laughs>